Okay, I really hope that this video works. I don't know for sure if it's going to work, but I'm going to try this anyway. I have here my Sigwin uh, terminal on, on Windows 10. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you something. I wrote a cool program. I'm going to first use the command ls to list the directory here. Um, I can even do something fancy, do the ls l and it shows the size and bytes of the files and all that okay so okay now first I want to show you the source code of my program cat chd dot c uh, okay well yeah it shows a little bit yeah and I can scroll through it too yeah it's a it's sort of a big program um perhaps Perhaps the best way to do this would be to use the tool less ckhd uh, dot c, which I don't know much about, but yeah, see what this does here is this lets me scroll through the source code. It's it's about 64 lines or so of code. And it looks complicated, and believe me, it is. And it's it's weird. But anyway, here's the here's the way it's gonna work. Well, I could show you what it does. You may not understand the code because it took me forever to figure out how to get do, to do all this stuff. But basically, I'm I'm gonna show you what it does precisely. The first thing I want to do, though, okay, there's the end of the source code. Is I'm going to I'm going to copy. Um, okay, I'm going to copy this text. Because this is a terminal window within Windows, I can do this. I can copy that text, and then I can use the Q key to quit. It's interesting. Okay, so anyway, um, so now I'm going to run that command. I'm going to compile it with this command, and what this does is you will see a file ckhd.exe and you know exe files are exec are executable files on on Windows 10. Now I'm going to show you something if I do backslash okay dot backslash and then ckhd what it does is it prints a message this program is the Chandler Klebs hex dump program also known as ckhd enter file names as command line arguments such as CKHD file dot extension basically so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you I have a, have a few files first I'm going to use the Unix tool cat to show you what's in these files as text okay for example cat 0 dot txt that's literally all it has I just typed that into a text editor and then similarly with um, 1 dot txt it does that so here's the here's the where it gets interesting. Now what if instead of doing cat we do the chd 0txt and that my friends is what it does precisely. It basically makes a hex dump of the um, of all the bytes in the file. And there's a variety of cool things like that. So that's what it does, and similarly, it will do it with 1.txt. So there are text files, but I can read them also as, as, as a hex dump. Now, there are a few other Unix tools that can do the same thing. So, for example, if I change this command to hex dump, it does something similar. But you'll notice something. It groups the bytes as groups of two bytes, and I cannot figure out how to change that. So um, what I did is I wrote the, my own program to do the same thing. And I later found out that there's another command, um, and this one is um, it's called xxd. And oh, okay, well, it looks really weird because it's yeah it's it's strange um, let me see if I can fix the look of this okay um, okay oh cool I made the window bigger okay now it, I made the window bigger so now let me run this command again 
So it still groups in, by, in groups of two. However, there is an option, at least with this one, I know the command to change it. So um, dash G1 space, and that's a command line argument. And what that does is it puts a hex dump that looks a lot more like what mine does. You'll see it, and, I, and here's what I'll do is I'll, I'll then I'll go back to the history of my command and what you will see if you look at the last command using the XXD and you look at mine um, that um, it also displays. Now the only difference between the output of the two commands is that one, the XXD tool also shows the text over on the right side and there wasn't enough space before when the terminal was smaller so now that now it's big you see that's what it does now mine only displays the offsets on the left side and the bytes themselves but if you look at those bytes they should be all identical uh, with one small exception notice that my program outputs the letters in uppercase because the letters A through F all are hexadecimal digits but the former one outputs them as lowercase letters. Mine does uppercase letters just because that's my own personal style. And it's very interesting. However, there's another thing that my program can do that you may not guess. I actually did include some code in it to do, it, it accepts a certain command line argument. If I set the, I can use this dash width equals four, for example and then it outputs them in groups of four. Each line contains um, four bytes. So we can do several things. We could, we could do one, and it literally displays each separate byte with the offset on its own line, and I can scroll through it. But we can, we can, do, any, we can do any grouping. So I can do width equals two. It does that. Width equals three and yeah width equals four I can do any width so that's the thing is I can do any number um, I could even do something like the width equals 20 so it's customizable however here I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you something if I do it um, as width equals 16 then it's basically the the same way it works uh, as if um, it, you don't use that command line argument because I set it to do 16 and if we go back to the command before XXD notice it also does groups of 16 because 16 is the default in many other hex dumping programs and because I think it looks cool because you know a group of 16 bytes per line the base is hexadecimal which is 16 so it just makes sense that it should be 16 bytes per line. So that's the reason I did it that way. And obviously this, this tool that I made probably isn't one that you would personally need to use because the XXD utility does the exact same thing. But I would like to show you a few other things while I have the terminal open. Let's see, I'll def I do hex edit 0.txt then yeah I can use this this is a very basic text editor so let's say well I mean I could I could edit these but uh, there's not much point okay yeah and I don't know how to run this program let's see F F1 Ooh, oh weird now yeah that show okay it's showing me the manual page for hex edit which is super cool yeah that's it's nice but yeah it's a command line hex editor and oh it has keyboard shortcuts so yeah there is a hex editor that actually works within a command line type of environment and would use if you were on a unix system with no graphical use the interface um, yeah that's cool there's all oh it even has cop, copy and paste commands okay yeah well that's cool anyway that's that's not really all that important
Um, wait. Okay, I forgot. How do I exit this program again? I need to uh, exit without saving. Okay, that's right. Um, control C. Okay, so now I exited that program. But I'm going to show you something interesting. I'll, before I end this video, I'm going to show you something about the source code. Like, let's say that I, hey, maybe I can get nano. Okay, yeah, that doesn't work. Um, VI zero, wait, CKHD dot C. And that's another way of showing you the source code. And what you'll notice here is uh, there's a lot of code back in the source code. But this line here is why that command line argument works. Because it, do, it scans a formatted string in this case the command line argument because it cycles through every command line argument and if it finds a string that matches this where a dash width equal sign and then a number it then sets width equal to that number it, it basically puts that value in the x variable and then it puts it into width and the reason I use a separate variable is that way that width will stay the exact same way um, unless uh, somebody enters that command line argument. But in any case, that was hardly necessary because 16 is just the perfect number. And I even have comments in this source code um, that show things. But basically, the program is fairly simple, but it took me a long time to figure out how to do this. See the, um, basically it goes through the command line arguments and each time it checks First, it, it, if there's only one command line argument, which is the default if you don't enter any, then it has one command line argument, which is the name of the program itself. Um, but, but if you, so then it displays that message. But if you enter any other strings as command line arguments, then what it will do is it, yeah, it cycles through them, and if it finds the one matching that width string, that command line argument, it can be used to change the width. And otherwise, see how it, there's an else clause here, the else block. Otherwise, it attempts to open that f file in binary mode. And if it fails because if the pointer is null, such as, because if it's a null pointer, it's zero. So basically, um, if it's, um, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, because if it's not okay, I, yeah, I forgot how this works exactly. But basically, um, oh yeah, that's right. Um, this makes it true if it's if it's if it, the pointer is null, meaning zero, then the not um, operator makes it positive, meaning that this will execute. So if it cannot open the file it prints a message that it can't open the file and there's no such file or directory. And then um, that was a temporary comment that I may use for debugging someday but it doesn't do anything right now. And then all these variables, they're very complicated but I actually had reasons why I chose these variable names. They're used to just keep track of things. And it's complicated but basically the addresses are always eight characters of hexadecimal and the and the bytes are always exactly two characters of hexadecimal and there might be situations where somebody wants more than that for but that that only really applies if you have a file that's gigabytes large in size that goes over 32 bits and my program is certainly not equipped to handle files that large anyway this is, this is meant for hex dumping small files as a programming experiment. But yeah, it's, it cycles through each, uh, each command line argument that's a valid file, or it will attempt, it'll attempt to open it, and then it will, it will read the bytes of the file, display them in hexadecimal, and then it closes the file. So that's basically how it works. And then I'm going to exit VI. I still don't know much about text editors, but I know how to exit the VI text editor. It's good. But anyway, that's all for this video. Um, let's see. I think, well, I better end it before the file size gets too big. 
But anyway, I hope somebody has enjoyed this video. The point is I wrote a program that can output the hexadecimal of a file and it's cool. I'm actually quite impressed that I have this programming environment that works within Windows. Sigwin is really cool and if you want to use Unix commands and compile C programs it works but I had to work a little bit just to figure out the install is not too tough but that's basically what I'm using um, to do all this so I have the C compiler GCC and all my C programs work I can also compile C++ programs but I don't like C++ as much as C I like C because <laughs> there's less to know because it's a smaller older language Anyway, enough of my rant. Um, I hope that somebody else got something useful out of this. And beyond that, I'm just happy that I got a program to successfully work. Bye.